Hello, I'm Pastor Jack Mantrick, pastor of Central United Methodist Church here in Waterford, Michigan. And, ta- and today, <laughs> this is our daily devotion for Wednesday, July 15th. I'd like to begin our devotional time by reading from uh, uh, the book of Genesis, the very first book of the Bible, the third chapter, the first 11 verses. Let's hear these words from, from uh, Scripture. Now the serpent was more crafty than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, indeed, has God said, you shall not eat from any tree of the garden. The woman said to the serpent, from the fruit of the trees of the garden, we may eat. But from the fruit of the tree, which is in the middle of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat from it or touch it or you will die. The serpent said to the woman, surely you will not die. For God knows that in the day that you eat from it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. When the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was a delight to the eyes and that the tree was desirable to make one wise, she took from its fruit and she ate and she gave gave also to her husband with her and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were wide opened And they knew that they were naked. And so they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves loin coverings. They heard the sound of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord among the trees of the garden. Then the Lord called to the man and said to him, where are you? He answered, I heard the sound of you in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked. So I hid myself. And the Lord said, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? <laughs> May God add a blessing to the reading of that, uh, of that scripture. Uh, this past Sunday, we began a series of messages on the questions that God asks of us. And so for this week, we're uh, beginning with a question that was found in the scripture. Did you catch it? It's when the Lord called out to Adam and Eve, where are you? (laughs) It's a great question. Uh, Where are you? And how do you hear that question? Um, I I know that we hear it in in a variety of different ways. uh, You might have something with a cell phone when somebody says, where are you? And of course, in today's world, you could be anywhere with this sort of technology. (laughs) I remember a bride just before wedding on the phone, and she was not asking it in a kind way. She says, where are you? Uh, when her maid of honor uh, had not shown up yet for rehearsal. Uh, Or you might uh, think of times when friends were out having a good time and they called and said, hey, where are you? Sort of an invitational way of of, of asking that question. (laughs) There's many different ways we can hear it, but but the true issue is how did Adam and Eve hear that question? How did they interpret uh, God's words? Um, Everything is dependent on its context. And we have to remember that they had just eaten of the tree that that God had forbidden them to eat from. And so they were hiding. Their eyes were open. They were aware of their their nakedness. Um, It was really an exercise in self-awareness for them. And so they hid. And, And yet, God is walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And, and, and uh, I, I don't hear God uh, asking accusatory, um, with a, an accusatory tone, where are you? Uh, he's, he's probably just looking for them. He's enjoying the garden. He says, where are you? Of course, he might be a little suspicious because they've never hid from him before. These are sort of those issues that you can unpack a little bit as you look at these scriptures that are sort of a, a prehistory of, of the Jewish faith. But, but you can look through those and, and, and consider those. The really important question is, how did they hear it? Well, it sort of indicates, how do we hear any question? What's the condition of our lives, our souls, our thoughts, our mental uh, capacities at the time? How do we hear the questions that are asked of us? question itself could have different meaning as well. It could be just a question of physical location. It could reflect on on, uh, a concern for your well-being or or your mental uh, abilities. How about you? How would you hear this question from God? 
And how is your current situation or, or capacities um, affect how you hear this question? Where are you? Meditate on this question today and uh, think about what it means for you to receive that question from a God who asks us questions. Let's pray. Gracious God, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for the relationship that you wish to forge with us. And we thank you for the questions that delve deep into who we are as your creation. Help us to be open to you and to your invitation to us as you call out, where are you? It may be that we have to reconcile some painful elements of our lives to to answer your question. It may be that we are joyful to be in your presence. It may mean many different things uh, to us at any given time. Thank you. Thank you for the gift of Christ who points the way and the Holy Spirit who strengthens us each and every day. Amen. God bless you, friends. Have a great Wednesday. Bye.